So we are going to do chicken anticuchos, which is anticuchos is a traditional Peruvian street food. Our take on it, we are going to serve it also with a Peruvian sauce, which is based on um, an ají amarillo paste. It can be fine as dried, and then you dehydrate it, and you make your own paste. So let's start. Chicken. We can use the chicken thigh, the chicken breast. In this case, I'm just, just using the breast. Let's do about two ounces each. For two ounces each anticuchos. So I'm going to cut in um, one piece more, six pieces. So we have our meat, the anticuchos. We are using this uh, really nice flat bamboo anti uh, skewers that I'm buying in the Japanese store. You can use any other type, maybe a little more affordable than this. One piece. So it seems that what, what I carried was too much. I have that left over. We have the two anticuchos, and I'm gonna start working with the sauce. Basically the sauce, um, it will come better in the hand mixer because it will be emulsified, but home cooking, um, we just are going to use a whisk. Flavors are going to be the same, uh, texture a little bit different, but uh, what we are looking for this is just the flavor. I'm gonna use a little bit of lime juice, Just about half a lime, but it will translate into, I would say, one tablespoon of lemon juice. Aji amarillo paste. Half a tablespoon garlic Basically what we are looking for in this sauce is uh, it needs to be balanced. Balanced between the spiciness, the acidity, the oil, uh, the spices, the salt. But and then I think that every chef would have a uh, different taste, so we just play with that. This is our garlic. That was about like half a uh, half club. And then with the whisk, I'm gonna wrap the oil. So I wrap uh, three tablespoons of oil, one tablespoon, one and a half tablespoon of lime juice, half a spoon of ajo amarillo, some salt, which I'm adding right now, and just a little bit of cumin. Cumin and oregano are in mostly of the dishes in Peru, so it's very traditional over there. We whisk a little bit more. We taste it. Mm. 
that's beautiful. Remember that if we leave this in the fridge, um, tomorrow it's gonna have a better taste. All the flavors are gonna marriage. Um, I think it's gonna, all the flavors are gonna come up, especially the cumin. I'm gonna salt and pepper the skewers. And we are going back to the stove to cook it. And then we finish plating up. Just a little bit of sea salt. Some fresh ground pepper. And to the stove. So I'm gonna add just a film of oil on top. Just a little bit. And the squares are going on. You can hear the, the, the sound of it. That means that the pan is about like, it's very hot. And I think with this temperature, we give about, um, I would say, two minutes on each side, and it's gonna be completely uh, done, but it still needs to be juicy. So these uh, chicken anticuchos are already cooked, but it's still juicy. We don't want to dry it up, mostly because it's, uh, it is depressed and it dries up, lose all the flavor, and, and it's, it's very difficult to, to chew. I'm gonna make the vinaigrette first. Usually vinaigrette, two parts of oil. In this case, I'm using like a really nice Greek olive oil. Some lemon juice. In this case, we can use any type of vinegar. Um, like sherry vinegar, rice wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. Um, remind that the vinaigrette needs to be two parts of oil, one part of acidity, in this case the lemon. Some salt, tiny bit of uh, black pepper, and shishimi, just to give a little bit of spices. I mix it. Some cherry tomatoes. Cut in half. And the leaves. Here we have a mix of green leaves. Um, as you can see, we have some baby Lola Rosa, frise, spinach, um, arugula, rocket arugula. Um, some radicchio, I see, as well. We mix this. I think that this is ready to serve. We serve some of the salad on one side. Uh, remember just to be very gentle with the salad when we are mixing it. anti skewers or chicken skewers. Some of the ají amarillo sauce on top. We are going to do uh, a great sushi, a great recipe for sushi, which is called, uh, it's an innovative kunkan. We are doing sear foie gras, a little bit of nashi pears, and eel sauce. So Koshi is gonna start uh, salt, a little bit of sea salt on top, a little bit of uh, fresh ground black pepper on both sides. and we are going to sear that to begin to do the gunkan. Gunkan is a great type of sushi which is used to uh, serve any type of loose ingredients, like it can be egg rolls, tobiko, uni. In this case, we are doing it with a great um, Hudson Valley foie gras. So now after koji san uh, salt pepper the foie gras, we are going to sear a little bit. It's gonna be raw in the inside. We are gonna pasteurize so it doesn't have a lot of fat. And then with this foie gras, we are gonna uh, start working on the gunkans. So 
basically we are going to start with the uh, uh, sear the foie gras. My pen has been a little bit there for a long time, so I, I hope that it's in the right temperature. Uh, just put your hand, hold it to see if it's already got the temperature that we are looking for. It needs to be hot, but not too hot. So it can get like a really nice uh, golden color, but uh, it doesn't burn. So you already can start hearing it. I place the first piece. The second piece, I'm gonna just cook two because are two of the ones that I need. So this is gonna need a little bit more of a color and a little bit, little bit more of time. I would love the camera to start getting the smell because it's great. So this one already got like a really nice golden color on the, on the sides, on the edges. So we turn it. It was about one minute, I believe. And always when you are doing your foie gras, always have prepped a plate with some paper so we can drain all the uh, all the fat that we don't need for the for the gunkans. I believe that these ones are already done. So that is a beautiful color that they already got. Second piece out. And we are ready to begin doing the gunkans. We just here our foie gras. If you can see the beautiful color that it got on the side, uh, in the middle is a little bit uh, raw, which we are gonna get the, the best uh, flavor. So Koshi san is gonna start cutting uh, the garnish, which is going to be nashi pears. It's an Asian pear. Um, I like the sweetness of it. We can use, um, if you guys don't find Asian pears, we can use any type of uh, pear or, or apple or any type of seasonal fruit. That has the same quality as, as the Asian pear. So he already cut the garnish. Now he's gonna start with the rice. This is a sushi rice. It's mixed already previously with a little bit of rice vinegar and sugar. It's a mix. We bring it to boil, same ratio of sugar and, and rice vinegar and then we cool it down and that's what we mix the rice. Now he's gonna do about one inch wide of um, seaweed nori, which usually is the one that we use to do the sushi. So I would like to see if you guys can see Koji wrapping the seaweed around the rice. So he already did the two kumkans. Now it's time to fill it up with the foie gras, which he put it whole, which is gonna keep all the juices inside. In this case, he's using the nashi pears as, uh, as triangles. Um, we can do a, a small brunoise, put it on top. We can do batons. That's up to um, the choice of the, of the chef. So now he's gonna drizzle a little bit with some eel sauce. Eel sauce, it can be purchased at Asian market. At the restaurant, we make it uh, with mirin, soy sauce, uh, eel bones, um, and sake, and we reduce it until it has like a really nice um, uh, glaze. Just a little bit of uh, drizzle of the eel sauce. He's gonna put just a little bit of sea salt and we garnish it with some micro chives. In this case, we can use some of the chopped chives or any type of uh, herb, but just with a little bit of flavor, not too pungent. Some sesame seeds. 
and there it is our CR foie gras gunkans with nashi pears, drizzle with eel sauce, and a little bit of chives on top. Enjoy! And today we are going to show you how to do uh, an innovative gunkan that we are doing at our restaurant, which is wagyu tartare with quail eggs and potato pie. So Koji san already started slicing the wagyu beef. Uh, basically for two gunkans, that basically is what it is for each person. We are gonna do about two ounces. The way that we are doing it, a sushi samba, one of them, which is one of the, I believe one of the best one that we have, it is the wagyu tartare. So he just slices it, he mints it basically. So he's gonna use a little bit of chopped chives. Some ponzu, which is a mix of lemon juice and soy sauce in the ratio of two one, two soy sauce, one uh, part of lemon. A little bit of olive oil. Uh, basically, I like to use a really nice olive oil. In this case, it's a, it's a Greek one uh, because it gives like a really nice fragrance and aromas. Um, a little bit of sea salt. Now he mix it, and that's going to be the filling for the gunkans. Now comes the second part, which is to make the type of uh, the type of um, sushi, which gunkan translates to uh, battleship in Japan. Koshi-san is going to cut the strips of nori, which he's going to wrap the rice with. Basically, we are going to serve two of them. Now he's, he's wetting his uh, tip of the fingers so he have the rice doesn't stick in his hands. Remember that this is a sushi rice, which is rice mixed with a solution of vinegar and sugar. Uh, basically, that mix of uh, vinegar and sugar is to lower the pH of the rice, so and then uh, there is, it doesn't get contaminated, there is no grown up bacteria or anything. For that reason, uh, the sushi is safe. Right there we see the two gunkan shape. Now he's gonna fill it with some of the wagyu mix that he did, which we call the tartar. So we have the gunkans, we have the tartars. Now it comes with two other ingredients, which are the primary ones, and they're going to give them the, the flavor that we are looking for. The first one, we are using some quail eggs. Koshi is gonna use just the yolk, one yolk per gunkan. Quail eggs, there is a beautiful scissors that they come in any kitchen store. Um, it's easier instead of using uh, a knife, it's more safe. Now Koshi is separating the egg whites and the yolk. If this will be uh, chicken eggs, I will, I will say to keep the white for another preparation, but now there is no problem, we throw away. Basically, the way that he's using to to take the egg whites out of the eggs, let's say, is using with two spoons. So he lets the whites to, to fall and then he keeps the egg yolk. Right there is 75% of the job done. He's gonna top it a little bit with some potato strings. In this case, we make it at the restaurant. We thin slice it through a Japanese mandolin. We fry it at 325 Fahrenheit. A little bit of sea salt when they are golden. And we let it rest. You guys can, we can buy it at the store as well. So he top it a little bit with it. He's gonna use some chopped chives, a little bit of sea salt on top. And that is the yummy, beautiful dish to enjoy. So those one are the 
Guayu Tartar, Gunkan from Sushi Samba. Enjoy. This is uh, Shio Shake Onigiri. So what Koshi already did, he dips his fingers a little bit on water. Um, he put a little bit of salt on his hands. And now he's gonna do the rice in the shape of a triangle. So as you can see, Koji make a hole in the middle. He's adding a little bit of salted salmon, which is already cooked and, and cooled down. He put it inside, and now he's making the shape. Basically salted because we want to preserve it. Usually snacks as the onigiri is something that people don't keep a refrigerator or it doesn't get cooked. So the idea is to the salt that we add up on the rice and the salt that we put on the salmon is gonna preserve uh, both of them so we can eat it at any time of the day. And now it's wrapping it up with a little bit of um, the crispy nori. Enjoy.